We are back on Morning Line. It's our final segment this morning with Davidson County Sheriff Darren Hall. Good to have him on this cold Tuesday. Very cold. You wearing your uh, thermal underwear? <laughs> no. Not today. Not I did today. yesterday. Not today. If you're out and about, you, you need it. That's <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But he's got a cushy office job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get back to the phone lines. Tawanda, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Tawanda. What's on your mind? I want to know, Sharon, can you tell me what can we do about these little girls going to have these little, these young men arrested for domestic violence, filing false charges, and then they're chasing them all around town. My son is being chased by her, her brothers, her whole family, and then when we take warrants out on her, she doesn't get picked up. But the moment she go down there and take a warrant out on him, guess what? The police are knocking at his door like he's Scarface or somebody. My mm -hmm. baby has never been in trouble, and he keeps going through this cycle with this same little girl who does it to every boyfriend she has. Yeah, I'll tell you, li mm -hmm. listen, um, mm -hmm. and I sympathize, Tawanda, with the situation. Now, again, that's more law enforcement police than the sheriff's department. But, you know, we've had some high-profile cases mm -hmm. recently where it turned out the charge of domestic abuse that made a lot of news right. was wrong, and it was made up. But I would say that, would you agree that if you talk to, you know, these domestic experts, uh, violence experts, the vast majority of the cases um, usually mm -hmm. have some degree of truth to them. It's the exception when it's <clears throat> not, but I'm not saying that doesn't happen. Yeah, I think Tawanda's got two issues, and she's right. I mean, the first thing is it is it usually has something to it. I'm not suggesting hers does. And the other one is it's far more likely that it's the male versus right. the female when you look at the numbers. Sure. Um, but I agree with her completely. I mean, I go back, I mean, uh, the, I don't know if you remember the Duke, Duke rape case uh, years ago oh, yeah, it turned yeah. out to, you mean not it to be the case in, yeah, in, in North, North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. I've always felt that if you if you <clears throat> charge me, allege that I've done all this stuff and we can prove that that's not true and that you lied, I think you deserve to go to prison for what you were trying to send me to prison for. Right. I can't and that's stand to ruin seems, people's lives. That's what appears lives. to be the situation where they don't go that route. Right. I, as I've, I've right. referenced, there's been a few high-profile cases right. here, and I almost get a sense that there's a hesitation among prosecutors to go after these women in those rare right. instances when they make things up because maybe they're worried against the backdrop of other women who are legitimately you know, being beaten choose not to come forward because what right. if it's turned around on me? Right. And, and there's the rub there. I think I, I think if you file a false report, I don't care what it's for, and you really taint someone else who pays for it, right. you need to be prosecuted if you file a false report, whether it's for domestic or anything else. Yeah, I mean, think about cyberbullying. I mean, you hear yeah. this term all the time. Well, the media and, and is obviously reporting stories because if a person alleges this and it's controversial and we see a lot of this and that turns out not to be the case, to me, that's the equivalent of trying to bully someone and ruin reputation and all the right. stuff slander. It, it's just, and, and I think Tawanda's right. I mean, it's hard when that's happening, uh, you know, to kind of fight your case. I will tell you that, that the future is, <laughs> it's video and it's taking pictures of the actions of these people, and I'm just using her example. Uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, and I'll, taking the, the video of her coming back around him, I would take an order of protection out if I were in their situation, mm -hmm. which is just ordering you to stay away from me, and if, if that person comes within the, the, you know, violates that, then there, there becomes a crime. I mean, it, it's, it's a shame, but, but I do think the future of law enforcement and, quite frankly, court documents is going to be video and pictures because oh, yeah. everyone's doing it now, and that, that actually is evidence that she was coming to see me after she was told not to do that, or I'm going to see you know, It just needs um, you to, to it's cover a, yourself or something And I like have that. teenagers, too, so I, I can understand what she's going through. It's a tough, tough thing to do. Let's go to Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Nick. Hey, what's on your mind? A uh, question and a comment. Sure. Uh, where did Carrie Sharp come from? We, I love her on there, and uh, I think she's such a beautiful woman. Yeah, she's and on your to Ms. Hall, uh, is this grandmother going to be questioned in the disappearance of little Noah? Oh. And uh, <laughs> I just don't understand how a grandmother could lose a two-year-old on a walk. That, that's a very wow, high-profile wow, case. Not wow. in our area um, locally, but it's here in, 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 in the region. And I've heard more than one person say it's interesting we haven't seen the grandmother be publicly upfront on this. And she could be devastated and not feel right. up to it. And the question, But is it not true? Right. Um, you hang around law enforcement, be it a, a disappearance of a spouse or a girlfriend or a child, and, and it's unexplained without a trace. I mean, the very first suspects are anyone who is closest to that. That child. That doesn't mean they did it. <clears throat> but if my wife disappears today, 
Okay, and I'm sitting here with you. I'm still the number one suspect right off the bat. And if this grandmother was with this child the most time, leading right up to it, in the absence of any other explanation, she is the suspect if there's foul play. Period. And now, it may not be true, but they're going to look at her hard. Yeah, I, and it may not even be the official title, but uh, but you sh in my mind, that person needs to be removed from a list before we move to other yeah. suspects. I mean, the reality of it is, most of the time, someone you know, know the most information. Yeah. You may not be criminal. You may know the most information. We've got to clear you before we go looking everywhere else. And, right. You know, there, there's a lot of history with it, that debate, and I always tell people this: it's not hard to figure out who did these things. It's not hard. It's not hard because the circle is very small. If, uh, I'm assuming, and I don't mm -hmm. want to do that, I'm assuming there was a crime involved. I don't know that. And we this, don't know. They're, they're hopeful that the child wandered off and is someplace safe right, right. now. At this much time, yeah, scary. highly the unlikely, unless oh the gosh. child is kidnapped somehow. Right, right. I just don't. So, yeah, so let me get away from that case. But in, in a crime, it's not hard to figure out who harmed someone, killed someone, because the likelihood that it's someone who has domestic uh, and passion involved is typically, I mean, when I was in grad school, it was 82, 83 percent of, of all murders are crimes of passion. Yeah. It hasn't moved much. So, I mean, if, if 85 percent of the time the person has passion for you, mm -hmm. there's not that many people who do. Right. And so we, right. we can get that circle pretty simple, and then we start going, okay, let's eliminate these. I mean, it's just, it's not that hard. Now, it is super rare, then, what you're saying, that it is the random, out of the blue serial killer. In fact, that's extraordinarily rare. So rare, I can only think of three or four times in my career in this business right. following that. It's always someone with some type of connection to connection the Connection to Always. Right. I mean, I, I think I think an interesting one is the one up in, in Kentucky. Kentucky. I was about to bring that up, where you've got yeah. uh, um, Timothy Madden right. charged with raping and murdering seven-year-old Gabby Doolin, which is a huge story right now. They claim they have DNA evidence. We don't know to what level it is, right. but if they do, I've said before, if they found semen in her and it's his, right. he's done. Right. He's done. Now, if it's a hair follicle or something like that, if the families knew each other, who knows? But I would yet, find it interesting if it's the only thing he's ever done, and I mean that because that, that's a bizarre behavior Right. I mean, as I don't well. think he has a prior criminal record. Right. Now, clearly, if he was capable of this, he may have done things in the past and gotten away with right. it. Right. It's it's just it's a rare case. When I saw that very first happen, uh, it, it, what makes it unique is the fact that there wasn't what you would consider to be a, a passionate relationship potential. That Still, someone who knew of the child, right. though, because right. the family right. and, and families knew each other. Let's take Patrick real quick. Patrick, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Pat. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to make a, a comment about, in, 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 in relation to what you guys were speaking about, mental health issues in uh, law enforcement. Um, it is a serious thing. I mean, I'm a person, uh, uh, I'm 49 years old. I've recently went through, uh, since I was 17 years old, I've been in AA programs and things like that, and I've worked them. They never worked for me. And, of course, AA will tell you a lot of these programs will not work for everyone. But the mental health issues as far as depression and alcoholism and drug addiction, it is so serious that uh, people are slipping through the cracks. And I believe that, that, that some people that, that, that the AA programs and things that do not work for are slipping through the cracks. Mm -hmm. And it's just a spiraling effect. A uh, person, especially when tragedy strikes a family or whatever, you know, for me, for instance, I lost my father. 2006, my mother 2008, and my uncle 2007, right there those three years. And I went through, and I'm a veteran, man. I was military police. I had uh, college. I went to school. Um, I turned to drugs. Mm -hmm. And um, it was something that, that mistake right there cost me with the paraphernalia and residue charges that I got. I ended up getting a felony on my record, uh -huh. which affected my entire life for just those small periods of time there and i right now I'm, I'm 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 in a group therapy thing which is an outpatient treatment and i've been going through it has helped me more than anything in my life patrick hang tight on that we just have a couple minutes and i wanted him to comment and he makes that good point we talk about the mental illness and so much of the component we didn't hit on too much is people like him who then for whatever reason going through a very difficult time self-medicate so you've right. got mental illness and drugs you've told right. me before that's Almost 100% of the inmates right. you have over there. Right. One yeah. or the other or both. The fancy word is co-occurring disorders, okay. right? Yeah. Everything's happening at the same time. You, you have a mental health issue, you have addiction issues, and, and they marry up. Uh, very complicated. Interestingly enough, when I started in this line of work 26, 27 years ago, the truth of the matter is the mental health community and the addiction community believed and lived in silos. And so the point is, if you were addicted, 
but you had a mental illness, they wouldn't allow you to take the mental health medication because that would mm. that was treated as a drug. Uh -huh. Today we've gotten out of that theory as as a society, mm -hmm. and you can treat this as one a kind of a holistic approach. We've got a mental illness, we have addiction, let's make sure the addictions that you're on, uh, that you're involved with, would, wouldn't be affected by taking, let's say, antidepressant medication. Um, but obviously, you know, you got all kinds of issues. If you're drinking, uh, it's a depressant. Yeah. And you can't, you can't, you know, balance the stuff to, you know, too Just too 30 far. seconds then. Your take though, it seems like folks like you who are in charge are aware of this more than ever before. Yeah, I think and mental illness is pushing so hard. The cost is what we're going to work yeah. on and, 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 I, and I hope to over the next year or so to, to update you on, on where we are. The design is what we're looking at right now, trying to design the facility where it would allow you to take these cases out and hopefully treat and house them differently and, and, and in a more cost-effective way. Great. Well, I mean, we'll talk about it more and yeah, maybe I can come out and do a story on that once Great. we get a plan Great. on that. Sheriff, thanks for coming on. Thank it's you, always Nick. a pleasure seeing you. We'll see you again in a few weeks. All right? as well. Take a break. Be back with a programming note about tomorrow right after this. Stay with us.